We've got actress and director Christiana Carmine in to discuss how to become a leading actress in your own romantic comedy, and we're going to sip our nightcap, Pinot Film Noir, tonight on It's Complicated. You're listening to It's Complicated with your hosts, Jennifer Golden and Lauren Leonelli, coming to you live from the AfterBuzz TV studios in Los Angeles, California. Hello, Master Daters. Welcome back for another episode of It's Complicated. The struggle is real when you're dating in the city. I'm Jen. And I'm not Jen. <laughs> I almost said Lauren, but I, I just felt wrong. P.S. Shout out to Owen Robinson, who is our voiceover. He is in a couple commercials right now. Guys, look for him. The one that is good is the Geico commercial where he asked someone to get him a frittata. Oh, Tom has to do all these things for him. Oh, so good. He like controls them. Yes, Owen. Your yes. voice is funny and amazing. And it's in our song. So and that. we found you. We discovered you first. We did. Um, guys, today we are going to actually discover how to become the leading actress in your own romantic comedy with director and actress Christiana Carmine. Yes, but before we get into everything, we are going to sip our nightcap Pinot Film Noir. See what we did there? Because <laughs> when you are talking about romance, nothing sets the mood like a darkly lit black and white film. When a woman gets grabbed and slung over the arm of a detective and then forcefully kissed until she cries. Sounds aggressive. Christiana, you're welcome for that direction for your next scene. And cheers to that. And uh, That she cries. This well, poor woman. Um, in this fictitious scene you made up. That's the film noir is very dramatic and dimly lit in mm -hmm. any way. It's just, you know, it's just setting the mood. Oh, man. Drinking's tough right now. Um, Ooh, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, we will. Um, but before we get into our complicated lives, we're going to talk about Christiana, our guest today. She's born and raised in New York, and she spent much of her early life as a stage actor, as the two of us also did. Mm -hmm. And she harbored a strong interest in the human condition. And as she began to amass a body of stage credits, her fascination with human nature continued to grow, influencing her work as a performer and leading her to study psychology at the graduate level. Um, guys, after completing her master's degree in psychology, uh, psychology with a focus on uh, crimeo, criminal sociopathy. I mm -hmm. did it right, right? You did. I did, but I didn't. Christiana <laughs> continued to pursue her career in film while working with professionals on network television shows and feature films as an actor. Christiana's attention became drawn towards the art of filmmaking. In 2011, she wrote and directed her first short, To Live and Try in L.A. on 16 mm Oh, yeah. And, guys, in 2016, she wrote, directed, and produced her second short film called Daryl, which mm -hmm. premiered at the GI Film Festival in 2016 as well, and has screened at several other film festivals to date. Daryl has won awards for mm. Best Female Director, <gasps> uh, yeah, and Best International Drama, and has been licensed by Vetstream TV. You guys, post-production was recently completed on Christiana's fourth directing venture called Solstice Ranch. It's Ooh. starring Will and Grace's uh, Ryan... Pinkston. I, Pinkston. I have a problem with that. Pinkston. Um, yes, it's just hard for me. <laughs> um, and uh, Essence Atkins is in it. Um, Marlon's Matt Shively. Um, and uh, he was also on The Real O'Neills, I think. Oh, yes. Oh, Marlon's is Essence Atkins. Um, and most recently, Christiana was hired to direct a series of narrative shorts for the Pasadena Community Foundation and is in pre production on the second film in that series it's a lot all it things. is but she also continues to create original content with a focus on socially and culturally relevant themes and subject matter so she's busy uh really busy and you've also seen her as an actress on the young the restless fresh off the boat 40 days and nights dracula reborn as well as many national tv commercials hot damn all of them all of them guys yes and you know we're gonna tell you a little bit about us now mm. that we've told you all about christiana um, Why are you having trouble drinking right now? Because I was just in Laguna Beach <laughs> for a cute little vacation at the most amazing hotel, Hotel Joaquin. It looked so pretty. I mean, it is a dream of a place. So if you guys want somewhere to go on Laguna Beach, uh, you should go there because it's very intimate and the staff is amazing and it's peaceful and wonderful and relaxing and quiet, but also it's super new, fun. It's a new hotel super too, right? Super new, yeah. been open two weeks and I had the... 
lucky opportunity to go down there and thank you hotel Joaquin. but i drank all the things and wow. now i'm tie tie that's what happens when you have access to things like that. You take advantage of it, guys. Yeah, you do. Thanks again, hotel walking. You can go <laughs> on dates with yourself at the hotel. I can, or I went with my cousin, but also who you saw on our yes. show, Melissa. Um, and then before I left for Laguna, I actually dropped my mom off at the airport, and I also went on a brunch date. So I was busy, and then busy. How did the brunch busy. date go? It was real fun, and he brought me a prezi. But I'll tell you about it when we talk about being the leading lady in our own okay. romantic comedy. He brought me a Prezi to brunch. I mean, that doesn't sound bad. Uh, I mean, I didn't know Prezi's Unless, were a thing, but I like it. I mean, yeah, I think so. It's almost Christmas, so why not start now? <laughs> I think it should just be every day. It should be. Um, well, my the mom's left after all the birthday extravaganza, and I helped out a friend on Sunday watching her son. It's like, you know, it takes a village. Totes always takes a village to date and to run your lives. And, um, and a parent. <laughs> James, who you all met, now we can say his name, is Cheers. a very <laughs> massive Massachusetts sport fan, Boston fan. Uh, the Red Sox and the Patriots won, so we can have a normal week now. Good. I'm so glad but life can resume. On that, I do like watching, though, with him because it's fun and there, it's like there's a celebratory aspect to it because it's like, you know, engaging and fun and and it's social. But what if they lose? Like, then no, what does he's he become? actually, he's fine. He's okay. actually not he, one of those ones that's like, I'm going to go maybe have to like be talked off the ledge. Wait. He's like, when they lost the Super Bowl this year, he was like, you know what? We won five. <laughs> like he was like find the silver lining he's pretty good about stuff like that but point about that is is that I like watching sports and making it like a fun celebratory activity drinking and doing stuff like that but normally he and I would be like let's let's invite people over I mean we played with it all day long should we invite people over but then we were watching our friend's son and then we had to like we just were like let's just spend time together there he is <laughs> it's just so funny um, and sometimes you have to like <laughs> have alone time but with your significant other like alone time for yourself or there's alone time with like just you two yeah there was just so many people and stuff so it was uh, like with throughout the week with the you birthdays were non-stop and yeah so, so many was people good to just like just be him and i yeah that once. sounds although really the nice. temptation was to like make it a big but we did it ourselves i made a big thing with my hands when i did that like a <laughs> wah wah like a dance because oh. i sometimes i forget that you not everyone can see us she forgets about you, I listeners. Forget. No, so. I don't. I mean, I you are our favorite audience, listeners and viewers, yeah. but also listeners. Yes, all of the listeners. See, it's and complicated. Viewers. It guys. is. That's it's why you tune much. in every week. So, guys, she directs kickass workouts as a personal trainer, directs films of all kinds, and directs her love life like a rom com that we would kill to be the best friend in. Mm. Supporting <laughs> actresses for all. Uh, welcome to the studio, Christiana. Christiana. Yay! Yay! There's that I hand mean, thing again. I just want to be the best friend in your rom com. <laughs> I would love to make you the best friend in my rom com. Cast. Like your life. I mean, like we actually <laughs> talked about you on a show a couple shows ago saying that. It's so fun to be around, like if you guys went on a trip. Yeah, if you're a couple, it's fun to have a couple that you like. Couple goals, but we need to think of something cuter. We said that we were like, we need to think of a better coined phrase. But like, it's so fun to be around you and your husband because you're so like in love with each other still. But it's not like annoying or like showy it's just very natural and like they still touch each other all the time and call <laughs> each other cute nicknames that's like funny and they like really look at each other and they really laugh and they've been married for almost 10 years because they got married when they were like 12. 12 teen? 12 teen. Okay. So and yeah. they're like still like I feel like she looks at him the way I still look at James and I'm like they have many years beyond us. <laughs> yeah. And we'll I'm catch like, up. That's a romantic comedy, but it's real. How did you guys meet? We met on a blind date. What? Blind so we just talked last week about being set up. So tell us about this blind yeah, date. Who set you up? It's great. Um, so when I was, I was used to be a trainer. Um, and one of my clients back in the day was like, I went golfing with this amazing man. You have to meet him and blah, blah, blah. And I was, and he was like in his late sixties. And I was like, I fancied myself, you know, a catch back then. I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm good. I'm not going to. Because you thought the guy that was setting you up was so much older that. Like, how could he possibly know, A, what you like, and B, like, why does he hang out with people in your age range? Exactly. Okay. I was definitely suspicious. 
Uh-uh. Did you say like how old is this guy or you didn't want to say that? I li- I was like, well, what does he do? He's like, I don't know. Well, how old is he? I don't know. I'm like, well, what if he's married? Doesn't matter. I, oh. Those were literally his answers. Okay, so that's like the opposite of how you set people up. Yeah. Like he yeah. should have had information to give you. But so how did you end up allowing this person to set you up anyway? So it's so crazy. Okay, so he, um, he basically was like, well, I'm going to give him your phone number. And I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> I'm dating somebody. And I was like casually dating this guy. And about 10 days later, he's like, hey, did that guy ever call you? And I'm like, what guy? Like, the guy I wanted to set you up with. And I said, no. <gasps> and the next day, my husband, now husband called and left a message. And I was like, oh no. I heard, first I heard I had a bad experience with a couple of English guys. That and he has a very thick British accent. Yeah, I heard the accent. I was like, delete, deleted the message. No, you did not. I swear to God. I don't know this story. Deleted the message, and I was driving down Ventura Boulevard. I remember I was driving down Ventura Boulevard. And it was I was like, ah, shit. So I like pulled over in front of the Pier One, um, and I like was going through my deleted messages and pulled up the message and listened to it. And I called him like, so like you called me, and he's like, yeah. And he he was like, can I call you back? I'm watching Twenty Four with my friends. What? I was like, oh hell no, he did. <laughs> but like, what's the, is it good that he answered and then said, "Can I call you back?" Or did you think he shouldn't have answered? Does he also did he not have DVR? Or was that not a thing back then? He couldn't pause twenty four. No, I think. Well, I mean, it was like he was it, watching with his friends. Yeah, so. he was watching with his friends. And like, it, I know, I know. He told me to call. He's like, "Can I call you back?" I was a little offended. But he was like, "Can I call you back?" And yeah. she was like, "So you called me?" <laughs> She's got this like thick New York accent. And he's like, "Can I get in a little bit? Can I call you back?" <laughs> That's exactly how it sounds. That's totally, exactly. totally how it right. sounds. By the way, oh, all right. but their their like voices and like banter could. It's just like from the opposite end of the spectrum. But then, so you ended up going out on a date with Went him. Went on a date with him, and I. I called my dad on the way home from the date. And I was like, he's too nice. I just can't. So you recognized his goodness, but you weren't like, he's the one no. instantly. See, no. we're going to talk about that too. Yeah. Okay. So obviously you went out with him again because you didn't just get like married right away. Yeah. yeah you no. had to go out again. Yeah. So. We, by my third, by our third date, which happened to have been like four, within four days, I was like, oh. yeah, I'm good. I don't need to see anybody else. And so, yeah. And then, uh, then we got married two years later. Wait, so what was it about him at date four or whatever, three date, whatever it was, yeah. that made you so sure? Oh, I don't, he was just so cool. He was just cool and confident. And he had a real job and he had, came from a great family and he was just really, he's so funny. Um, he just constantly made me laugh and he, to, and he didn't care that he just, he was just interested in what I was doing, but he had his, he had his own life. Like he wasn't like, um, I don't know. He wasn't like too much. He wasn't like too full on, but he, you can tell, I, I knew that he was interested in me and I just was like, this dude's for real. Like he was just awesome. He was able to find the balance that we talk about so much for yourself and for the person that you're dating. That's appealing and intriguing and attractive, which is like, be busy doing your own thing, like authentically, oh, yeah. but don't play the game of like, I'm going to wait four hours Ugh. to text you. So I look no. busy, right. but like you believed he was maybe his niceness might have been off putting it first because of whatever prejudgment you have had or yeah. whatever but then I think soon after you probably realize he's authentically nice and he's authentically busy and he's authentically funny and he's authentically interested in me you didn't detect any sort of a and knowing her husband he is it's easy to see his authenticity um, soon so I could see how this unfolded a little bit quicker for you yeah. he's not like somebody that doesn't let you in really but it's again no. it's not too much it's and that's i think that's a good thing to pay attention to for yourself too when you're dating like you want to not give too much away but like be authentic about what you're ready to reveal totally yeah. and he was yeah he was just i mean you'll appreciate the story then from what ju- i i just saw a um a naturopath yesterday and she had like these things that you have to fill out online before you go in for the for the session or whatever and one of the questions was, can you describe your relationship with your partner? And, you know, it's like in one line. So I just wrote, my husband's the best thing that's ever happened to me. So oh, I'm sitting cute. down. See, that is a romantic comedy. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't so funny. It was just really romantic. But, well, I guess he's the funny one. Right? He's, he's really okay. the funny one. I just do stupid shit and make him laugh. But so I was sitting down across from her and she's like, well, I just have to say right away. She's like, 
um, the line that caught me was that you said, you know, your husband, and I started crying because I'm like, he is. And she's like, are y'all newlyweds? And I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it's just like, you know, he's, yeah, we really sort of have a good synergy and yin yang type of thing. We're very different, but we like really love a lot of the same things. We just from doing. I feel like that's important because the shared interests is what actually keeps you together because you do those things or you like the same things. You could be funny. He could be not funny. But if you like the same things and then you can somehow laugh at the same things, yeah. that is what brings you together and like makes you like vulnerable and close and stuff. Yeah. And they don't really. all have to be exactly aligned. Like don't let that put you off when you're trying to like suss someone out from the beginning either. Like, well, they don't like this or they don't look a certain way or whatever. You've got to like be open to finding the similarities within the differences because they're there. Do, is he does he look like the type that you would normally go for or we talk about like physical types on the show yeah. a lot too. Yeah. He it's yeah, I mean he just like he had blue eyes and dark hair, dark brown hair at the time. Now he's like a lot of gray, yeah. but um but yeah, he like was like physically I mean when I first met him I was like he needs to get a haircut and he needs to lose 20 pounds. But like <laughs> I wasn't having that. Yeah. But, you know, um, but yeah, he's just, he was like my type. I think, you know, you typically go for guys that, or did, but look like Tim, so. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. She, yeah. she stuck with her path. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll get there yeah. um, as we go through some tips that we found online about how to become the leading lady in your own romantic comedy which we will discuss with you and see if you agree with these tips or if you have tips of your own just based on working in film and TV and also having a successful relationship. Yeah, because we do think that like life imitates art, that if you're a successful director and you are able to direct, for lack of a better word, things to play the way that you are envisioning them that's gonna mean that you have that sort of ability in your life as well to like visualize something and to make it appear and for real. also though a 10-year relationship you've been married for 10 years but how long were you together before that so 12 years we've been well we've been married for nine we just okay. celebrated nine in august yeah. and we've been together for 11 and a half got it yeah well yeah. that is a lifetime in la <laughs> yes it so is. congratulations <laughs> for breaking all kinds of records you get um, a glass of wine today. Sweet. So congrats. P- Pinot Film Noir. I because love Because you're Pino, Pino an noir director. And film noir isn't necessarily romantic comedy genre, but you see where we're going. <laughs> There's romance in film noir. Also, just in case we, everyone was curious at home, our wine is actually called, it is Pinot Noir, like we said, but it is called Caretaker, which is what leading ladies do for their significant other once they find that love connection in the movie and directors do it too they're taking care of everyone and they're calling the shots on the set and they're making it happen calling all of the shots like proverbial and Mm -hmm. actual and they say in a relationship that behind every strong man or behind every man whatever that kind of man there is a strong woman yeah some man of any sort he could be weak He's just existing. <laughs> just the man. He's alive. That one. He's breathing. Whatever. Yes, that's all we need. Until you just kill be him. a man. <laughs> like so, in film noir. Okay, so now we are going to point out some things that you might see in a romantic comedy, and then we're going to talk about how it like transpires into real life. Because right, yeah. So like, oh, love the one you hate, right? Like the oldest plot line in the romantic comedy game, or like. You know, Shakespeare got there first, as usual, with plays like Much Ado About Nothing. And, like, it's like you, that that person's so annoying to you. Like, and you got mail. How they're like, oh, like, I don't, she didn't want to date him. She was like, no, he's bad. And he owns that bookstore. And, nah. and then you see <laughs> it happening the whole time, right? Oh, they're going to fall in love with each other. Or, like, how does that transpire in real life, though? Like, well, obviously, you have to pick the person you despise the most and then you marry them. That yeah, is the like, key to success. Awesome. Obviously, go find your most hated person. Not marry that sucker. Yeah, that's not the way that it really plays out. But like, this is the slow burn theory that we like to talk about, and it's sort of like happened for you. I mean, it your slow burn was a little quick. Though. It was a little quicker, but it was more like you didn't on your first date. First of all, you like didn't even want to talk to him, and you deleted the message. And then on your first date, you were <laughs> like, um, I don't. He's too nice. Maybe after that, like a couple of dates you were like warming up to the fact that you thought you didn't have to see anybody else but it wasn't 
initial like sparks for the very first second he walked in the door. And we think that the slow burn theory is sort of like what the romantic comedy version of this is in real life, meaning like it's okay to like take your time with somebody and it doesn't have to feel like this amazing explosive magnetism from the get-go and that's how my relationship was i've also been in the reverse and they've turned out fine and then not fine but psychologists say that like when it starts out really strong it burns out really fast it can not always right so so you want to burn slowly instead of quickly but the other thing is is basically you just let someone grow on you like a pimple (laughs) yes you could know but you also like want to maybe not have like blinders on to things that you think you don't like about somebody like he has to look a certain way or he has to oh I had a bad what did you say about the British accent thing you had a preconceived yeah yeah and I and I think that's you know I think in LA there's just that there the people are always talking about how hard it is to date in LA and all this other kind of stuff and people are, are narcissistic or they're you know um judgmental or you know, they want they want things and they don't care about personality. And I think it's just L.A. is like a larger place. So, of course, like the D-bags you're going to meet are going to be more um, apparent than if you're like somewhere in you know, some small town with 20 people. Um, and I think that like we have all of these preconceived notions. So, yeah. So when he first called, you know, and I heard the British accent, I was like, been there, done that, not doing that again. Um, but, I, you know, I just I think that when you're open to just what you know when you're just kind of open and you open yourself to different experiences and dating different people you never know what is going to come out of that um also so. i'm going to add to this because i think the version that we see in the movie is very superficial mm-hmm. and it starts that way where it's like pinpointing like what you said you're like oh he owns the bookstore Wah. but or like oh he's got an accent Wah. but like what is that person and who are they to you and how do they treat you? And like you do at some point, if you really want a relationship, humans yeah. that are listening and watching, you have to dig a little deeper. For like sure. you don't want somebody to judge you based on your hair color like they do in maybe auditions. But you, as a relationship, so. you want somebody to say, hey, that person has the best character I found. And I want to be with that person because they're the kind of human I want to be with. And this isn't not just, a superficial crap. Totally. And this isn't to say that you're not allowed to have these triggers of like, oh, the British accent or oh, he looked a certain way or whatever. That's fine. Have the trigger. Just check in with yourself and be like, hold on a second. OK, yeah, I do have this like baggage from before about this thing in my mind like why don't I not do that and be open because this is, doesn't have to mean that this guy has a British accent that he's a dick <laughs> which is what you did you saw past the accent and now you have a husband and uh, the world and if, r- record breaking relationship and if, in LA and if Tim, so you hold that record and if Tim your husband Good ended job. up being a dick you don't just make sure you don't also tell yourself like see I was right like it's no just, you're basically Meghan yeah. Markle and Prince Harry yeah. Yeah. That's true. So true. <laughs> I can go home now. That was good. She also looks like Meghan Markle. I know. That's why I said it. Mm. And he's British. Tim does not look like Prince Harry. He is much more handsome, but we will. He is British and he is white. Yeah. So, got that so part, white, dude. Yeah. Okay. Well, so now the other, the next one. Yeah. So, imperfection is sexy, guys. It can be if you're into looking at somebody without fucking superficial glasses on. Mm -hmm. Um, So if romantic movies have taught us anything at all, it's that females cannot get enough of guys with major psychological hang-ups. It's like you want to fix them or something. Non-traditional body shapes. Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes it doesn't work when the genders are switched, but it's fine. We'll get there one day. We're evolving. Uh, Can't buy me love. uh One of them. Or 40-year-old virgin with Steve Carell, who's like furry and needs to get waxed, and he's 40 um, and sexless and awkward as AF um, or Silver Linings Playbook where yeah. Bradley Cooper is a big freaking weirdo and yeah. needs some help and stuff. But in real life, it plays out like, you know, we just talked about types. Like sometimes you go after the type that you didn't think you'd go after. But we talked about being open and like maybe the guy you're dating is suddenly the wrong color scheme. You know, I mean, suddenly, did he change colors? No, like he's (laughs) like like suddenly this guy that you chose is the wrong color. (laughs) Got it. But (laughs) it's, you know, you need to let it play out like we just said. Right. Like I have a thing for dad bods 
for a variety of reasons. You like them? Yes. Oh. Because if they spend more time on themselves in the gym than they do with me working on their family, uh, just any other activity, and they're vain about it, or like those guys that like take photos in the mirror at the gym, I'm like, could you die? Like, sorry. Like, yeah. I'm sure you're, someone likes you, but I don't. Go away from my <laughs> eyes. So... I like dad bods because I feel like they have more going on, but they're still healthy enough where, like, they're not fat and have a beer gut, but they're, like, dad bods. Like, I will they've say, got other priorities going on. I will say my friend Dave at home has a, an awesome body, and he does not work out a lot, and he's a dad, and he has other things he has going on, but he also happens to have a really good body. See, that's the kind of dad bod but I'm looking for. But it's not <laughs> what you would call a dad bod. If this guy okay, took well, his shirt off, you would be, like... That guy w- works out, but he just so also be aware that you don't want to just look at someone who looks fit and be like, you're vain. Like some people just have that effing body and you can go F yourself. Sure. But, but yes, don't I see what selfies. you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. You have to. Also, I love a good guy in therapy. Like the fact that he wants to better himself. Now, if he has to wear a straight jacket, deal breaker. If he's just there because like he knows that it's basically like getting a personal trainer for your emotional yeah. intelligence and stuff, then cool. Do that. Do you Love find that you want to cast men who, I mean, I guess it depends on the film, but would you want to like... Like leading men are not A leading gonna... man that is like maybe a little goofy or a little off. Like, do you find that that could be appealing? Or I guess it depends on the story you're telling, but... It would definitely depend on the story I'm telling, but I think... I'm just, I love underdog stories and I love underdog actors. And so I think... See? You know, that's just kind of my... Valley there. Yeah, and Tim, her husband, is a good-looking guy. Like, by, but <laughs> you, you may also have found yourself in the past, like going after a guy that maybe wasn't as good-looking as Tim potentially, because you maybe are attracted to that anyway. Like that, you know, you yeah. could see the how underdog. That, yeah, the underdog. Although like you it. said that Tim was too nice, so maybe not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think I felt that first date. I was like. How is he going to deal with just, I'm a brat. Like, I'm a serious brat. I don't think she is, but. <laughs> but did you feel like he'd be like, you'd steamroll him? Like, he was that nice that you might be like, I, too much for him? Absolutely, 100%. And now, it's so funny, because he's so mild-mannered, but he definitely is like, you know, it's a joke in our with, with an, amongst our friends and stuff, because I'm like, he wears the pants. Like, I'll be like, babe, can we? Nope. But I do, yeah. You know, and just like shut it down. But he doesn't do it in like a demeaning, condescending no, way. No, it sounds like you met your match, and he oh, knows yeah. when to call you out. Oh, totally. Or when to like rise to your occasion, it's, and you know when to back down. And this yes, is I and do. this is the thing. It's not about what you're saying most of the time. It's the feeling behind what you're saying right. that you're giving somebody. I feel though that Tim has a very for you appealing way to he could say no go fuck yourself but it wouldn't offend you because he knows how to say it or you know the feeling behind it and the women, intention. women operate that way mostly right do you find that you also like direct people that way too when you're like you have to work differently probably with men and with women when you're directing yes. correct like 100%. your language changes your language changes your body language changes everything changes and, and there are some even so, it actually, it differs from actor to actor. I just had an experience the last, I directed the last episode of a of a pilot last month, and uh, I'm sorry, of a, um, of a web series last month, and the way I would talk to this whole group of actors was one way, and then this one actress was just not, you know, but I had to kind of go in there a different way. So it's, yeah, it's different. Do you found that that made you a better communicator in your relationships, in your personal relationships, your romantic relationships? Yeah, I think I think just I mean I talk a lot. I have a big mouth and so it doesn't usually <laughs> so I think having the ability to um and I love people, so having the ability well, to Well, you like, did sociopathy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and psychology. So does that play into how you direct as well cuz you can yes. read people? Yes. I I so I whenever I would lament about Oh my God, I'm never going to use my master's degree and I went to school for nothing and I spent all this money. And now like being on set or even just dealing with some of the people in the industry who are seriously insane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, like I, They're everywhere. Understand. Dating world industry, they're everywhere. They are everywhere. And you're like, how do you survive in life? Yeah. You know, but, um, but I do, I kind of tap into just my love of people and just my, my, just my background in cu- being curious. I'm more curious about 
okay, how can I interact with this person even though they're not my people, but I have to, I have to make this work. It's like a work. personal challenge. Totally, yeah. Yeah, and then the <laughs> byproduct is directing them in a film, but the, the passion is coming from wanting to connect and communicate, and that's like a major thing in relationships too, which is probably why she's in a su successful, <laughs> almost 10 year relationship, people. <laughs> See how these things, these almost skills are transferable? They are, in fact, communication can also be done by way of stalking. Yes, it can. <laughs> and stalking often leads to sexy, Lauren. It does lead to sexy time, guys, because nothing says I love you like dangerously obsessive behavior. Mm -hmm. You know that song by Beyonce, Dangerously in Love. It's that's a real song. thing. It is. So we have seen this in um, some movies like, I don't know, where did someone stalk somebody? Oh, well, say anything. you know what? Say anything with the, the, Don Cusack. the, with the boom box thing. Or Marlon Brando and Stella. It could be looked at as a little aggressive. And some women might be turned off by this. Not I. Not I. I want someone Jen to it. find me wherever I am. <laughs> because they cannot not find me. And they have to tell me how they feel about me. And sometimes I will be like sad or something. And I'll be like walking my dog. And I'm like, it's fine. Because, like, the guy's going to just drive up and be like, hi. And I'm, I'm going to be like, save you. but I'm also not going to be, I'm not going to wonder through my little inquisitive mind, like, how did you know I'd be here at 445 in the street with my dog and not anywhere else in the world? Like, how do they just show up? And that doesn't freak you out? No. See, I... I love it. I want it. In <laughs> real life, I think that... Be a fan. In real life, I think showing up is important. So this is how it would translate in, <laughs> in real a regular life. way. Clearly stalking. And we joke about this, too, on social media. Like, ooh, stalking someone on social media. Can we all just say this? that is not real? A, no, it depends how far you go with it. Because I will say this. Oh. There was a guy I was dating four years ago. And I swear to you right now, every... Instagram story I post, she is the top one who looks at my thing. And I looked up what that means on the Google. When somebody is the top person on every single that one shows of your stories, first. it's because they didn't get there first, but because they look at your profile the most. So even if they don't like your photos or they don't follow you, they literally have your profile open the most. Oh. And that is why they are at the top of the list. So anyway, this girl stalks the shit out of me. I don't know why, because we have dated four years ago, and I sent him a screenshot. I'm like, uh, can you explain this? Why she is looking at my shit? He's like, because you are my type, and she probably just thinks that we're having sex. And I'm like, but we're not. He's but like, wait, well, though. maybe we should since she thinks it. I'm like, I don't think that's the like reason we should be doing that. Oh, my God. But Snake charmer. I, I, feel, oh, I feel as though that is a loose term like now and today. Stalking. Like stalking, because social media, it's like if you look at someone's photo, it takes one click of the finger, right? Well, so, sometimes you look at their sister's not really aunt's brother's cousin's yeah. ex-wife, and you're like, how did I end up here? But Where did I, my time go? But I do think in real life, showing up is important. Like, when's the first time that Tim did something like that to you? Like, showed up, and you were like... When he called you back after you watched 24? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, how long did it take him to call you back? He called me back that night. Okay, good. Yeah. You and see... He did. It was a Wednesday. I think we saw each other on Friday. Oh my god, I can't. I love how remember quickly all that. Moved. Yeah, moved down. down quickly. And he lived in Redondo when I was in. Studios. Oh, that's yeah. right. I'm sorry, that's, that's a right. long distance relationship. It was, yeah. Where was your first date? It was in. We had, we met halfway at the Grove because I was like, you can meet me here. Okay. <laughs> the Grove. It's a magical outdoor mall in LA where magic happens. It's uh -huh. like Disneyland. And yes. songs play and at the fountain. <laughs> and in fountain moves. And, and the very fountain romantic. is like where somebody in a romantic comedy might stalk somebody and sing a song or, or something. Or fall in love. Fall right. in love in the fountain. Well, no, it would be like, if you love me, I'll see you at the fountain. And then you end up at the fountain and then the music plays. Or they're trying to the get the person's dancing. attention yeah. and they jump in the fountain to be like, Christian. <laughs> like, that's probably what happened. Did Tim do that? Did he jump and he's in the like, fountain? No, let's go to he dinner. He didn't. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't but we both have our Should first date outfits. Him. What? You kept them. We kept them. You're <gasps> lucky that I have not helped you clean your closet out because I'd probably make you throw it away. That's no, you only, would not. No, no it's I the only wouldn't. thing we both kept. Well, I shouldn't say outfits. I should just say our top. That's oh. like what we like. He has still has a jack because he's like probably ten sizes smaller than he was back then. That's an exaggeration. But yeah, like I have the shirt and he has his jacket. His it's shirt. cute. His That's birthday. so cute. So is he like a romantic at heart? He's a romantic. He's like total athlete, like sports guy. Like he works in sports. He's a sports exec, blah, yeah. blah, blah. But he is a definite, like he is a romantic for sure. And still to this day. Love he it. still like does these little things. And I'm just like, 
who are you? <laughs> so cute. So cute. See, you do live this romantic comedy does, life. She somehow directed him not <laughs> to do those things. It's like, how does that happen? Also, if you want to be romantic, never pass up a song. Spontaneity can sometimes be cute. You know, there's like suddenly bursting into songs in romantic comedy or like maybe there's a cute song montage that plays. And I you're love just, a good montage. I, how, do you use them? <laughs> I do. Yeah. I have two montages in two films. I see Ferris Bueller's Day Off used one. Ten Things I Hate About You. There was a songs in there that you just, You're like, just too good, good to, to be, be true. true. Can't take my eyes off of you. <laughs> and that wasn't uncomfortable for anybody watching. No, it wasn't. Super normal. But how it translates in real life is you're not going to burst into song and dance like the movie with Ryan Gosling and what's her name? La La Land. La La Land. Yeah. Well, that's but also a musical. You but. are, I know, but you could just spontaneously start dancing with your significant other, James. And I do that sometimes. Yeah. Just be like, let's start dancing. That. That's amazing. Or we burst into a dance party with his daughter and like, or you sing a song together, karaoke. Karaoke. I mean, karaoke. You could like a have a song that you sing to each other because it's your joking song. You yes, mean, we have a joking song. What you, is it? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it Chicago? No, that's no, their actual um, song. That's our actual song. Um, all by myself. <laughs> so whenever he like goes, ironic. goes away, he travels a lot. He for travels him. a lot for work. I'm like, uh, you know, and I'll sing. And then, or if he's like home alone and I'm like at an event or something, he'll say, you know, he'll just like sing that song. Oh, he has cute. a terrible singing voice, by the way. Really, Chris has that a accent? good singing voice. <gasps> what? She does. James does not. But James is okay. He has an all right singing voice. <laughs> our song is. You're the best around. <laughs> Nothing's going to ever keep you down. Karate Kid. Yeah, um, that's a good one. I, yeah, I, we, at Noel, who was our guest last week, um, at his last birthday, you guys did some karaoke. Yes, Africa. That's yes. song. I love <gasps> Africa. Toto? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, my fave. <laughs> It's hard. No, it's, it's so a hard. hard song to sing, but it's it doesn't funny. Really, like, work I bless the rain. It's no. not good. It doesn't sound good I feel at like all. There's no, like, beat. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there is, but it's just not an easy song to sing. It's very the, hard. The it's, thing so is, good is, for you guys. This comes out. It doesn't have to look like a romantic comedy, guys. Make it funny. Like we sound like assholes when we're singing "Africa" by Toto, and we just do but it. But it means something to both of you because it's fun. Exactly, and you fun, guys sing "Fun is Important" all by myself <laughs> when you're apart, which is lovely and a cute. Because the point is to have inside jokes, yes, and mean something to each other in your own way. Yeah. So, okay, cool. Guys, guess what? Not cool. Because what you want is someone that isn't cool. And yeah. that actually, in turn, is cool, if you follow that at all. Yes. And you could see something like this, potentially, in Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Russell yes. Brand yeah. wasn't cool. Well, he was like the cool... Because he was cool, yeah. and, but he was a but dick. But then he was like a dick. But then also the first, her boyfriend, boyfriend was like not cool, but he was the and one you loved. puppets. Yeah. And did, but was super remember talented. Remember Jason Segel's role? Where has he so been, good. by the way? Is he an actor still? Would you... Cast, so, okay, now. Dad bod. Question for oh, you. Totally for Would you see him as a, like, again, depending on the story, but I'm just saying, just blanket statement. Like, could you make him the leading man in a film or would you pick more of, like, uh, Ryan Reynolds? Oh. I, I know it depends on the story, but I'm just saying, do, where would you go, like, instinctually? <sighs> That's a really great question. And I think we're like we're living in a time, especially in film, is if you wanna cast the person that's gonna sell the most Yeah. You know, for your distribution. But I would I would prefer Jason Siegel. I love yeah. Ryan Reynolds, he's amazing, he's a talented actor and he's gorgeous, but but Jason all, I think all the way. She goes oh, Because the underdog yes. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um for sure. But I, I do love that he, like, ended up getting his shit together and you, like, yeah. watch his struggle because you, as the audience, are not probably sitting at home as looking like Ryan Reynolds. You are more yeah. the Jason Segel. more Siegel. relatable. Right. Totally. And so then you also don't like the girl because you're like, really? You're picking that stupid Russell Brand instead of Jason Segel who's sad and plays puppets? Like, yeah. You know? <laughs> Writes oh. weird, sad puppet musicals. But then but he turns out to be super successful, and you're like, see? See. Nerdy guys are cool because they end up being successful, and they're nice along the see, way. See, Tim was super nice at first, and look. Look how that But then out. you thought he was super cool. That's yeah. what you said. You're like, he actually was cool. I mean, you like a good nerd, Jen, right? You would go for, like, the uncool guy. I fucking love nerds. See? That's what I'm saying. You Here's don't want why. to add, like, nerdy, like, their essence nerdy is cool, but, like, if they act, like, because you can't bring, like, a person that has no social skills out right. with your friends. Because no, then you don't want to kill No, like, more <laughs> like they geek out over something that isn't considered cool. For instance, I 
talk to you about this brunch date I went on the other day. Now, typically, I probably wouldn't think somebody that is a dude that's six foot tall and very handsome sits at home mm. and makes his own pesto. But this one does. He, made, he brought no, your homemade made pesto? A jar of homemade <gasps> pesto. Oh, my God. I hope he looks like the guy that Jeff just posted. Kind of a little, sort of. More That's like Clark amazing. Kent. He looks Ooh. very Clark Kenty. Um, I like Not to be guy. confused with another word. But, so, did you follow that? No. Oh, that's okay. Listen to our show. I got it. Thanks. <laughs> uh, so, anywho, he brought me a jar of pesto, which Clark I thought was... Kent is supposed to sound like a different word? I said Kenty. Oh. Keep up. Anyhow. <sighs> Drink your drink. Uh, so, anyway, brings me a jar of pesto. And while I was like, why do I get a gift of pesto? We never even talked about my love of pesto, but I'm so glad that I love pesto Who and you brought me love pesto. pesto. I don't, somebody's probably allergic to it, with those people with allergies. Pine nuts. <laughs> no, it, yeah, that. And it Somebody also, very boring. Right. I'm sad for them because they he puts chickpeas in there. And I'm like, the more chickpeas, the better. Oh, love interesting. It. To like make it thicker yeah. so that it's not just like oil. Oh my God, he's going to cook for you. Wait. Well, I have we a- have plans on Friday now. So. Okay, this is good. So now this could have been a deal breaker for someone who's like, why did you do that? Whatever. You know, everyone like that's has a, a weird, you kitchen nerd. Did it? <laughs> There was there ever a moment where there was something that you, like you questioned in your relationship with Tim that might have been a deal breaker or in the past with men you've dated was there a moment of like a a deal breaker where you're like oh no this like just too happened. many video games this just happened and now I cannot not with Tim but I would have to be here like for eight of your episodes to to like <laughs> one of them. List. Um, one deal breaker that comes to mind where you were in the moment and you were just like, this just happened. I had one. A boyfriend of mine, he had a issue with all of my friends. It was really annoying. I could forgive his like social skills that were odd. He was very good looking. But it finally came down to the point where he had complained about enough of my friends. My deal breaker moment, I was having my 21st birthday and he's like, I'm not going because all my friends were going. And he's like, I'm not going. I don't like any of them. And I was like, I'm breaking up with you. Done. I cannot do this. You cannot be friends with my friends. Uh, bye bye. So was he just not cool because he was like, couldn't hang he, with your crowd? He just couldn't. I don't know. It was immaturity. But anyway, we were young. But anyway, that was my deal breaker moment. So not cool. I dated a guy for a couple of months and he was really rude to a server and I was mm. like bye that was the last I mean I, yeah can't what yeah see it? everyone can't has a boundary won't. can't and won't guys we can't and we won't alright we've got a couple more we have this one I love and I really feel like this is gonna sit well with all of us here especially you Christiana to embrace the supernatural uh, now while this looks different <laughs> in a romantic comedy like ghost or something like, like you that. literally fall in love with a ghost or Casper but, I still love Casper yeah, from that movie with like Nina Ricci. Splash or whatever. All Mermaid. great. But in real life, I call it paying attention to the signs. So, or whatever, whoever you're asking for, God, the universe, whatever, you ask for some things, be specific, and you get them. Pay attention to what is being shown to you. James just talked about in our last episode. He asked the universe, he called it, for some specific things. They were presented when he met me, and then he felt as though he couldn't ignore these things, although he may not have been quite ready to accept them. He felt like he could not not pay attention to the signs. So that's, what, he it, was that's what it looks like in real life, I think, would, to pay attention to things that are being presented to you red flags 100%. or white flags right 100 percent. i put a list of what i wanted in a guy under my pillow and that guy legit walked into my life like a month later that that guy stole tim and yeah. that guy okay, cool. <laughs> did you write a like, british where did accent he go? did you write a british accent i didn't write a british accent but i did write foreign oh you did not i did yeah and then you got a British and you're like, I hate this accent. Next, yeah. Italian, I know. please. I know. Like, send it back. French, send it no, back. I... Return to sender. Yeah, well, you should have been more specific about your foreignness, Christiana. Well, so that's the thing, is being specific. Like, I sometimes I'm like, in my last relationship that I've talked about on the show, I'm like, so I said I wanted all these things, but I guess I wasn't specific enough where I wanted him to, like, also be mentally healthy and all these other things. <laughs> well, no, you yeah. learn, though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You Fucking... learn have to nail it down like what you no, want you do you do when you don't because i also think that sometimes like 
for example, Tim is obviously not perfect. There are some things oh, yeah. about him that He's you not. guys work Sounds on like or that may be issues at times. And I think you work through it or it doesn't become too much of an issue for you to like move past. So I think those moments become deal breakers when you know that it's not something you can move through. Right. But until yeah. then, yeah. I asked uh, one of my actresses, her parents, she told me her parents were married for like 35 years or something. And I was like, what's their secret? Have they told you? And she's like, yeah. She said that her dad said, she asked her dad, and he said, neither of us fell out of love at the same time. And I thought that was really interesting because I've, I've also oh. read in the past that like, well, especially when you were somebody for 20, 30, 40 years, obviously your relationship and your feelings for each other are going to change ebb and, and ebb and flow. And they're going to, you know, they're going to differ from time to time. Um, but there's always one person that's really willing to stick it through and to fight for the relationship. And I haven't experienced that yet in mine, but you know, I think we have the balance and the, and the, the foundation that if uh, God forbid it ever happened, that we would have, we'd know it's worth fighting for. The goal is the same. Yeah. So sure. you both want to be together. So you'll do what it takes together. Now we have one last yeah, one. one and last this is one. my favorite one yeah. because it's so dramatic. I know which one you're picking. Yeah. Run, damn it. Run. Run, Forrest. Because when you realize that you love someone, you don't just sit at home and send them a text and tell them you love them like you can today. Which you is snooze. You show up. You show up at the like airport. Like in Clueless when she <gasps> ran to him. Yeah. Story. Oh, do tell. Tell us your story because you are living the life. So last year I had to go meet him at a um, he had an event for work in San Francisco. And um, he was like, okay, you're going to fly into such and such airport and you're gonna have to get on the BART. Are you sure you're okay doing it? I'm like, yeah, I'm grown. I can get on the BART. And it's get just to... BART. I'm, I'm from grown. the Barry. You can't right. say the in front of it. It's okay. I'll let oh, it sorry. Go. I can take BART? Yes, BART. Really? You don't say the BART? No. Awkward. Yeah, also, Bart you're going to take swear. Bart? It sounds like you're taking a human. No. Bart, kind of. I'm it's riding not, a human I'm with, Bart. Excuse me. Bart is an acronym. Bay Area Rapid Transit. You don't Can't say, you say I'm the going, Bay? I'm the not Bay Area going, Rapid Transit? I'm not going to take the Bay Area Rapid Transit. Why? I'm going Why to not? take Bay Area Rapid Transit train because it's a I name. I would say the subway. I'm from New York. It's anyway. I wouldn't say subway. continue. I, well, I'm going to uh, take subway to get there. I'm, I'm going to also take my no, sandwich. I'm going to take. <laughs> ah! I'm going to take the A train to come get to you because that's the title of the subway. Yeah. So why can't I take the Bart, which is the title of Bart? No, it's because it's a pronoun. I'm going to look. Keep this up. going. <laughs> so good. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I got it. I can take a cab, whatever. So I'm. I get off the plane, and I had had a couple of glasses of champagne. Mm -hmm. and as you should. As I should. And this girl is like, I don't know where the... I had no check bag. I had my bag, my rolly thing. And she's like, I don't know where the baggage claim is. I said, oh, I, I can walk you there. I had no idea where it was, but, you know. And we're walking... You were directing. I was directing. Traffic. And she's like, there's this guy kind of totally staring you down. And I turn around, and it was Tim, who had taken... Bart, <laughs> thank you. All the way to the Aww. airport to meet me with a jacket because I forgot one. So he went to the he went to the store, just the mall, and bought me a coat. <laughs> and he was there, and I was like, "What are you doing here?" I thought I was gonna get there by myself. He's like, "Yeah, but I was just worried. It was nighttime, and I was but worried." That's not that how he sounds. No, he sounds like that. And we get to the, this big dinner, you know, after he had legitimately gone so far out of his way to not have that. <laughs> at this dinner and one of his coworkers like so what airline what airport did you fly into and i was like oakland oh you didn't even know i didn't know yeah t she never knows he takes care he helps <laughs> yeah it's it's i cute. had no idea and i he, can run a set of 45 to 50 people but i lived i haven't booked it yeah i know i did not know what airport line at airport i landed at and so oh, the what? moral of the story he is knew what you needed yeah. show up when the time is he right knew. yeah you only it's only too far if you don't want to go and you always want to go when it's the right person and before we wrap can you please tell everyone how like it's some quick advice how to like how, how, to keep how, to, love alive. how to keep love alive and how to be the leading lady in your romantic comedy how to make your life look like a romantic comedy but in the realistic ways that we just listed like what are some tips that you have because you're clearly doing a good job of this yeah. I think kindness is so huge. I think when we've been to, with a person for a really long time, it gets so easy to not be kind to one another. And I, I honestly believe that respecting that person and being kind and laughter, we laugh a lot. And it doesn't mean that I don't want to punch my husband in the face sometimes because I wanted to do that just a few days ago. <laughs> but, um, but no, I think, and I think that <clears throat> taking the time to spend together, like you were talking about before, like having that time 
to spend together, but have a big, what's the things that are important mm. to you is to keep that alive. And I just think kindness is so huge and it's um, simple, but it's real. It's so big. Yeah. Especially when and you're keep having it sexy, ladies. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Keep it sexy. Keep it sexy. Get and some I think nice jammy All downs. these are like things that you see in a romantic comedy. Just extract the realness from it, guys. Mm-hmm. Don't wear your dress string sweats. Direct yourself into the life of Christiana. Exactly. <laughs> and now also very, very quickly, um, where can everyone find your movies, find you, social media, all the stuff? Um, Instagram at C Carmine Directs and uh, CarmineDirects.com is my website. You can see some of my stuff on there. And, Africa. and you can go to Africa oh, and find yes. me at Lauren Leonelli on all the social meds. Jen, where can everyone find you? You can find me at Jennifer Golden on all the social meds. And guys, next week we'll be doing a quick fix episode where we discuss some stuff with each other. That's it's right. audio only, so you'll miss our faces potentially, but we'll be back. But you've seen enough of us anyway, so at there's really point. no point. Actually, and, two, the next two weeks I think are audio only. Yes, they are. So don't forget to follow us on all the social mm-hmm. meds at Complicated so Show you know so you where can and know when. where and when. And we're going to wrap up Friendtober on um, Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. With Jay Ali, our actor yeah, friend. that's right. So tune in next week for our quick fix, fix episode. We're going to talk to each other about life and love and all the fun things. Being single in your 30s yeah, and why right. it's okay. And how it's okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Christiana. Thank you guys for having me. It's and awesome. We so will fun. see you next week. Love, love you a long time. time. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the host only, not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners. 